Hi guys, so welcome to the second part of the series of videos, Unraid Shares in Depth. Hi guys, so let's go on to part 2 of the series about using Unraid Shares. Now this part is mainly for you Apple Mac users out there. We're going to be looking at setting up shares and how to access those shares from Mac OS. As well as looking at how to connect to the shares, we'll also look at some tips and tweaks we can make to the shares to improve our user experience. Oh, and having an Unraid server with a whole load of storage is obviously a great destination for backups. So we'll be looking at creating a share that can be used over the network for Apple Time Machine backups. But before we start, let's just look at the type of shares which you can create on Unraid that macOS can connect to. On the Unraid web UI, under Settings and Network Services, we can see AFP, NFS and SMB. Now if you look at the icons here, you'd be forgiven for thinking that if you're using an Apple you should use AFP, if you're using Linux you should use NFS, and if you're using Windows then it should be SMB. Well this actually isn't the case. Using macOS we can actually connect to any one of these sharing protocols. AFP stands for Apple Filing Protocol and it was developed by Apple for use by Apple clients on the network. However nowadays AFP is actually depreciated by Apple. In fact the AFP protocol does not support the new APFS Apple file system. So if you have a macOS system whose hard drive is formatted with the new file system then you can't use it to serve AFP shares. So basically, new Macs can't serve AFP shares. But all Macs can actually connect to an AFP share. The protocol certainly isn't dead yet. But in my opinion, there's no point using AFP on your Unraid server for shares unless you've got some old Apple legacy hardware that can only connect that way. So what about NFS? That's got the Linux Penguin above it. And actually, a Mac OS client is able to connect to an NFS share as well. And NFS stands for Network File System, which is the default file sharing protocol for Unix and Linux systems, which has its roots going way back to the early 1980s, being developed as an experimental file system by Sun Microsystems. So actually the best type of shares to set up for an OSX client is actually an SMB share. And the reason why we can see the Windows icon above the SMB protocol is because it was developed by Microsoft and the SMB stands for Server Message Block. You may also have heard of a file system called SIFS. Well, actually, that's just another name for SMB, and SIFS stands for Common Internet File System. So, when using an OSX client, nowadays the preferred file sharing system is SMB. So now with that said, let's go across to the Unraid server. So, if you watch the first part in the series, you'll remember that I created these two shares here, the Media Share, and the secret share. Now the media share is a public share and the secret share is a private share in which I've given access to myself here Ed. I've given it read write access. So what we're going to do is to connect to those two shares the same shares that we connected to in Windows in the previous video and this share here, the media share, let's have a look inside it and see which files and folders are here. There's just four folders here, the three Back to the Future movies and a folder for music. So let's minimise the Unraid Web UI. And just before we start, I'm going to go up to the Finder Preferences here. And under the General tab, I'm going to put a little check here under Connected Servers, so they're displayed on the desktop. And also under Sidebar here, I'm also going to check the Connected Servers tick box here. OK, so let's open a Finder window and here we can see the various things on the network. Here's the backup server here. So let's click onto that and we can see at the top here it says we're connected as a guest. So that's absolutely fine for the media share. So let's pop into that one now. And you can see now the media share icon has appeared on the desktop as we're connected to that share. And we can see those four folders that we saw a moment ago. And obviously because it's a public share we've got full read access, we can read all of these files and full write access being able to create and delete files. OK, so what happens if we want to connect to the private share? This one here, secret. Well, we can see here we're connected as guests. Just as in Windows, we're not going to be able to click onto this and connect straight into it. 
and we're going to get this error saying the operation can't be completed because the original item for secret can't be found. So we need to open Finder, go back to the backup server and this time click on the connect as here and we'll get a warning pop up saying we're attempting to connect to the server. We just want to click on to connect. Now this time it's going to ask us to connect as a guest or a registered user. Now earlier in the first video I set up the user Ed and this user has been given access to the private share with both read and write access. So here I'll put in the user Ed and the correct password. And that password is the password that I used when creating the user in the Unraid Web UI earlier. Now one thing to note is, you can connect to the share with any username that you have set up on the Unraid server which has the permission to access the share. The user doesn't have to have a local account on your Mac. So with the username and password put in, I'm going to check remember this password in my keychain so I don't always have to put it in. And now with that done at the top here, we can see that I'm connected to the server with the username of Ed. So we can go into both the public share here, and that volume's now mounted on the desktop. And now because we're connected to the server as the username of Ed, I can also go across and access the private share, the share called Secure, and access that as well. And also, as soon as we connect to it, we can see that's mounted on the desktop as well. Because this user's got read and write permissions, I can obviously open files and look at them, but also I can delete files and basically do anything I like within the share. So of course, connecting to shares on Mac OS is very similar to how it is on Windows. You can't be logged in as a guest and be able to connect to a private share. But unlike Windows, it's very easy to switch user. All we have to do is click on disconnect here. And we can see now that the mounted shares have gone. And now we're connected as the standard guest. So now I can switch users and I can go to another user. This time I'm going to connect with the user Kuma. And we can see I'm connected as Kuma. And now I'm going to go back into the private share here. And again I can read files. But the user which I've logged in with, the user Kuma, doesn't have write permission. So if I right click and try and create a file, I can't do so. The option just isn't there. And if I'm to try and drag a file in here to copy it, I get the no entry sign because I don't have permission. But if I connect to the media share, which is a public share, then I can copy files and they're fine. Because being a public share, it obviously has full read and write permissions. OK, so moving on. So how do we actually connect to a share automatically when Mac OS first starts? A bit like a map drive in Windows. Now remember, I'm logged into the server at the moment with the username of Kuma, which doesn't have full permissions to the private share. So I'm just going to disconnect and log back in as Ed as I want to be able to have the private share auto mount with full read and write permissions. So what you need to do is log into the server with the username which has the permissions for the share that you want to auto mount. So I want to have the media share automatically connect and we can see that's mounted on the desktop and also the private share, the secret one here. I want that to automatically connect as well. So now I can close this window and now we want to go to Mac OS's system preferences and go to users and groups and under my user here I'm going to go to login items and I'm going to drag these volumes into this box here. So now when I start up Mac OS it will automatically log into these two volumes without me having to do anything. So now I'm just going to restart the computer to see that working. OK, and now with the computer restarted, we can see that these shares have automatically been mounted. OK, so let's look at some of the little problems that we can have when connecting to shares. When browsing for a share, sometimes you can get this error here, saying that the original item can't be found. Normally, if you just go back to the server and click on it again, you'll get straight back into it. But on the rare occasions where you can't do that, just go to Force Quit and then select Finder and then click on to Relaunch. And then when you reopen a finder window, you have to wait a moment and then your network devices will then appear in the sidebar and then if you click onto it then you should go straight in. Now there is another way you can connect to a network device and you can see here there's an IP address in my list. And you won't normally get an IP address showing in the list unless you've made a direct connection to it already. Now it can be useful to connect to a server by IP address because this server I'm connected to here is my main one and it has two network adapters. It has both a standard adapter and a faster 10GBE adapter, so I'm connecting to the IP address of the 10GBE NIC. That way, I can get faster transfer speeds from my shares. 
So to connect this way, you go to the finder bar and go to go, and then connect to server. And then here you type in smb colon forward slash forward slash, and then the IP address of your server, and click on to connect. And then you can just choose what you want to mount. At the moment, media and secrets are already mounted, so I'm just gonna mount the ISO share. Then it will open straight into a finder window and you'll see it mounted on the desktop as well. Now I'm going to eject all of these volumes or basically disconnect from all of these shares and go back to the go on the finder bar and then back to connect to server. Now this time I'm going to put in the same IP address but you can also at the end just put the name of the share you want to connect to. So I'm just putting forward slash media and then clicking on to connect and it will make a direct connection straight through to that share. So now if you look at the sidebar you can see the IP address of the server listed here now as well. That's because I've connected to it directly. Okay, next we're going to look at something that's not actually a problem, but for me at least, it's quite an annoyance. If I go into the media share here, and we can see there's just four folders here. And if I go into this music one here, there's just one folder here as well. So let's close this, and now I'm going to go across to the Unraid Web UI, and under the media share here, I'm going to browse, and we can see there's an extra file here, the .ds store file. And if I go into the music folder, there's one here as well. However, if I look in one of the Back to the Future folders, we won't see one here, because I haven't actually browsed this directory at all. Well, not from a Mac OS machine anyway. Now basically, we can't see this file when we look at it from Mac OS. But if I look at it from Windows, for example, I can see the file here. Now I can only see this file because on my Windows machines I do like to have show hidden files and folders enabled. But if I was to put it on don't show hidden files, then we can see I can't see it here either. So to some people it might not be a problem these extra files being created. But if you look at these shares from an OS that can see them, they can get quite messy with all the DS store files. And as well as looking messy, they can actually cause another problem which we'll look at later but we can actually stop Mac OS from creating the DS store files in network shares. But before we do, let's just talk about what DS store files actually are. The .ds store stands for Desktop Services Store. It's basically a file that Mac OS Finder creates, which contains information about how the folder was displayed last time it was opened. For example, things like icon size and position. So it isn't an essential file, and it doesn't matter if we don't have these files on network drives. Now of course it doesn't actually matter having them on network drives and it doesn't really matter if people see them there, but they can be a bit annoying and sometimes they can actually panic some people when they see them. Now I'm going to tell you a funny story. A client of mine asked me if I could connect him to a share that he used in his office from home. Now at work he only uses a PC, but at home he'd recently bought a MacBook Pro. So he connected to the share from home on his Mac to edit some spreadsheets and stuff. And then when he went back to work on his PC, he saw some .ds files and some other files created by his Mac. Now he was convinced that someone had hacked in and planted viruses. Now it took me 20 minutes to convince him this wasn't so. So there are definitely times that the creation of these extra files can certainly be annoying. Now we can stop these files from being created. And there's two ways which we can do this. We can stop Mac OS from actually creating these files on network shares, or we can make a rule on the SMB server that prevents these files from ever being created. So if we want to stop them being created on the actual machine, if we open the terminal and enter this command, and hit enter, and for this to take effect, we need to log out and then log back in. Okay, so now I'm logged back in. I'm just going to go to the Unraid Web UI and I'm going to open up this container here, Crusader and I'm going to go to the shares and go to the media share and I'm going to delete the .ds store file. So now when we browse here, the .ds store files have gone. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to browse back into the media share and now because of the command we just put in, macOS won't create any .ds store files when we're browsing. So going back to the Unraid web UI and refreshing the page, we can see that nothing extra has been created. So whilst we can stop macOS from creating .ds store files, that command doesn't actually stop it creating some other sorts of files in the shares which can cause problems on networks with mixed OSs. So let's have a look at that problem now. 
So you can see on the desktop now, I've got a folder called Wallpapers. And inside here, I've got 49 files of various different pictures that I use for wallpapers on my machine. Okay, so I'm gonna go across to the Unraid server, and I'm gonna make a new share, and I'm gonna call it Wallpapers. And I'm gonna leave it as a public share, and now I'm gonna to connect to it, and I'm gonna open the Wallpapers folder here, and I'm gonna copy these 49 files into the share. Okay, so now let's go across to the Unraid server again, and let's have a look inside the Wallpapers share. And we can see now I've got 51 objects here, because I've got the 2.ds store files here. But now I'm gonna minimize this again, and I go into the Wallpapers share, and I'm gonna open all of these files. Okay, so I'm gonna close the preview, and I'm gonna go back to Unraid, and I'm gonna refresh this page, and now we've got 100 objects here. And if you see here, it's created a lot of dot underscore files here, because we've opened these files. So yes, we can't actually see them inside the share. And if I go across to a Windows machine, onto a machine where show hidden files is not enabled, then I can't see any of those files either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually delete all of the picture files from within the share on Windows. So I'm gonna delete those 49 items and now the folder's empty. So let's close this and go back to Mac OS. And let's go inside the wallpapers share here. And again, the folder's empty. So that all seems good, yes? Well, this is where the problem happens. So let's go back to the Unraid web UI and go to wallpapers and I want to delete the share but it says the share cannot be deleted because it contains data but when we looked at the folder on Windows and OS X it looked like it was empty so let's go back to the user shares and have a look inside the wallpapers share so now we've got all of those extra dot underscore files that Mac OS created left behind 51 of them that will need to be deleted before being able to remove the share so this is why these type of files can cause problems. And that's why for me, my preferred solution is to prevent these files from being able to be created server side. So let's have a look at doing that now. Right, so let's go across to the Unraid web UI and we're going to need to stop the array. Now we're stopping the array because we're going to need to make some changes to SMB. Okay, so let's go across to settings, SMB, and then under SMB Extras, I'm gonna add something to the Samba Extra configuration. I'm gonna veto the files. So I'm gonna type into here, veto space files space equals space forward slash. And then the first type of file I want to veto is the dot underscore. And then I'm gonna put in a wildcard. So that first part's gonna veto the dot underscore files. So I also want to veto the dot DS store as well. So I'm going to put forward slash, and then dot ds underscore store, and finish with a forward slash. And if there is any other type of files I wanted to exclude, I could add them separated by a forward slash, as many as I want. So with that done, I'm going to click apply, and done. And I'm going to go back and start up the array. Now I'm going to go back to the shares, and this folder's still got those files in, so I'm gonna manually delete it. So to do that, I'm gonna use terminal, then rm r, and then the directory. So using the command rm space hyphen r, this will recursively delete folders and all subfolders and files within it. Now, for those of you who are new to using command line, then if you ever use this command, then please, please be really careful because you can easily delete the whole of your array without any kind of prompts or warnings that you're going to do it. So for example above, if I'd forgotten to type in the wallpapers part and just typed rm space hyphen r then forward slash mnt forward slash user, that would delete all of my shares and all of the folders and files within it. So please, if you haven't used command line much, then please be careful. Okay, so with the warning out of the way, let's carry on. So the reason I deleted that folder was because the wallpaper share wasn't empty and I couldn't delete it through the web UI. So now if I refresh this page, the wallpaper share won't be there anymore. 
Okay, so now that it's gone, I'm actually going to add it back. So I'm going to add the share back. I'm going to give it the same name, which is Wallpapers. And I'm going to go back to Mac OS and connect to that share. And I'm going to copy those same picture files across. And again, I'm going to open them all just as I did before. And now let's close this window, go back to the Unraid Web UI, and now let's have a look inside the wallpaper share now. And now because we vetoed those files in the SMB configuration, we've only got 49 picture files here. Nothing extra is being created. So in my opinion, that's much better, much more clean, much more tidy, and it isn't going to cause any complications with other operating systems. Now I'm sure there are going to be some people who are watching this video who are going to be saying it's not a good idea to veto files being able to be created on the array. And so whether you do it is up to you. This is just what I do on my server and I've never noticed any ill effects from the Mac OS systems that are running on my network. And I just find it keeps the array much more clean and tidy and it's my preferred method. Okay, so let's finish off with something that all of you Mac users are probably going to find useful and that's how to create a Time Machine Backup Share. So let's go across to the Unraid Web UI and the first thing we're going to have to do is stop the array because again we're going to need to make changes to the SMB configuration. So let's go to Settings, SMB and then what we have to do is we have to enable Enhanced Mac OS Interoperability. So let's select that and click Apply. Now we can go back and start the array again. Now we want to go across to shares and then click on add new share. And for the share name I'm just going to call it time machine. Then click add share. Then under export I'm going to select yes time machine. And underneath that we want to set a volume size limit. Because we don't want time machine backups just being able to go crazy and take as much space as they like. So I'm going to allocate 500 gigs for mine. And so as we're putting it in megabytes, 500 gigs is 500,000 megabytes. Now lastly, I'm going to change the security from public to private and click apply. And now scroll down. And as it's going to be me using this share, I'm going to give Ed read and write access and click apply. Then done. And the share is set up ready to use as a time machine volume. So let's minimize the Unraid Web UI and go back to Mac OS. And let's browse to the backup server and then connect on to the time machine share. Then once the share is mounted on the desktop, we need to go across to Finder, then Applications, then open the Time Machine app. And then click on to set up Time Machine. Then click on Select Backup Disk. Now you'll be able to see the Time Machine share that we've mounted on the desktop, so select that and click Use Disk. Then you'll see a dialog box coming up saying you're attempting to connect to your server. Now don't press the connect button, well not yet. It's really important that before we do this, we unmount the mounted volume on the desktop. So go to your Time Machine share and click on to eject. Now it's really important to eject the volume before clicking on to connect to server because if you don't, the time machine setup will fail. So with the volume ejected, now we can click on to connect and enter the username and password that we used to connect to that share. Then time machine will count down until it does its first backup. So I'm going to skip across to when the backup starts and then time machine will start looking for the backup disk and then preparing to backup. Then if you've done everything correctly, the backup will start. Now the first backup takes quite a long time, obviously because it has to back up all of the data. And for me this took about one hour. So I'm just going to skip this video across to when the backup had finished. Okay, and so it's worked absolutely fine. So Time Machine Backup has backed up onto an Unraid share. And the first backup used about 60 gigs out of my 524 gigs. And remember you set the size that you want the Time Machine share to be when you set it up in Unraid. Okay, so before we finish, there's just one small adjustment to make. Because if I go to Finder and then browse to my server, then I can see the Time Machine share here. Now, I don't think it's a good idea for the Time Machine share to be showing, because you don't want someone going inside and deleting the backup by mistake, not knowing what it is. So if I close this and go back to the Unraid Web UI, and I'll go across to Shares, and I'm going to select my Time Machine backup share here, and then down at SMB Security Settings, under export, I'm going to change yes time machine to yes time machine hidden. 
and click apply and done. And now if I go back and browse the server again, and now I can't see the Time Machine share here. But Time Machine will work absolutely fine with the share being hidden. Right, okay, it's time to wrap up this video now and bring it to an end. And if you liked it, then please hit up that like button. And if you like the channel and you haven't already subscribed, then please subscribe to the channel. Now I just want to give a big thanks to all of my Patreons and supporters out there. Thank you so much guys for making these videos possible. And the next video in this series is going to be on NFS shares. But for now it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in that next video.